To another edition of the PHNX D Bags podcast, right here on PHNX. My name is Derek Montia. Of course, I am occasionally known as your mayor of the postseason. I just I just upgraded myself yeah. to that occasionally because it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> this man next to me, of course, is supplying all of the lights in this room. It's Mr. Electric himself, Sean DePaz, and we welcome you into our NLDS pregame show which feels like a fever dream. It does. Is this real? Is this real life right now? It is, now? in fact, the motherfucking yoffs. It's the yoffs. Now, and we're a wagon, by the way. We are a motherfucking wagon. Got that new shirt on. Yeah, of course, you, you should great. go pick it up. Thanks. I, I feel this shirt is amazing. This shirt is it freaking look great. It looks, it looks good. Feels good. It feels good to be wearing it. And of mm. course, people have asked me time and time again, what does it mean when you guys say, it's a it's wagon that your team is a wagon it means we're on a fucking roll that's what it means and the diamondbacks are on a roll and if hopefully you don't know what wagon means yeah it's not for you it's not for you you weren't <laughs> meant to know um but of course here we go with the playoffs we have our updated bracket uh i think we have some maybe maybe even some updated uh, uh totals in here yeah the texas rangers pulled off a big win today over the baltimore orioles uh, and the Houston Astros, they are winning against the Twins to nobody's surprise. Mm. Right now, the Phillies appear to still be up on the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, and was, you were also saying that there was some trash yeah, thing going on the catcher's field? interference call that went against the Braves, and some Braves fans responded by throwing some beer cans on the field, it appears. Bad behavior in the playoffs yeah. from fans, some right? Fan, well, I mean, some fans. Some fans, yeah, select fans. I'm not <laughs> – by. It, it only takes a few to get yeah. labeled a bad oh, well, I wasn't you saying, know, fan. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to come at you for generalizing a whole fan base. I have oh. no problem with that. I was oh. just saying it wasn't all the fans of the playoffs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. our <laughs> fans haven't had a chance to, to cause any ruckus yet. Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe we ca yeah, cause some ruckus. A lot of, but, a lot of cocky uh, Dodgers fans in Arizona. Anyway, yeah, we have some. Uh, do you have the scores for today's games? No. Okay. Well, uh, uh, anyway, regardless, uh, there's your updates on, on the bracket. 3 2 so far. Texas. 3 2 six, Texas. Four, Houston. Okay. And then, yeah, Philly's still up 3 0 in the bottom of the A. That's right. So, Philly's. That's uh, they're doing the Philly thing again. They are doing the Philly thing again, and of course, it just reinforces how wrong I was about <laughs> thinking that they were a good yes. idea to take them on there in the playoffs. But uh, there are some roster updates uh, today from the Arizona Diamondbacks before the NLDS started. They have replaced Bryce Jarvis in the bullpen with Kyle Nelson mm -hmm. on their postseason roster. Tori said the following in regards uh, to them substituting Kyle Nelson in. They're stacking their lefties, what it looks like, the first line of substitutions, the second line of substitutions. I just felt like when I was talking to the front office about some versatility, to have that extra lefty would give me a little bit of an advantage with some of the moves. Yeah. Tory playing chess? Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, hopefully neither of them are all that important in the series. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a matchup thing, and that's, I guess, the nice part about having a little bit of – uh, like a little bit of bullpen depth, really. Like they they have an ability to kind of change things around depending on the opponent. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, I like I said, I said Tory. I think was great as a manager through the first two games. So I'm not gonna start questioning questioning him now. Not at all. And I think I think it is a good move. And I think right now, like you said, the bullpen has been oddly one of their strengths yeah. and uh they're gonna need it in order to to go down this road apparently uh jesse tweeted out that kershaw is going to be limited to about 85 pitches himself so it looks like the diamondbacks will be doing a uh, battle against the dodgers bullpen as well uh hopefully they know that and they can use that to their advantage early on to be patient try to get kershaw mm -hmm. limited on how many uh of course how many innings he can pitch out although there. like we saw like we said when we talked about the the when we were previewing the dodgers like the, the bullpen is one of the is one of their strong suits too. Like if you're going to do damage against the team, it's probably against the starting pitching. Mm. So get to Kirsch early and knock him out of the game early. So they got to tax that bullpen at the very least. Well, it is a big stage for the Arizona Diamondbacks right now, and they're getting a lot mm. of national recognition. There's a lot of talk. Uh, I do want to say this 
uh, the fun viewing during this series is on the Max app. They do have oh, the yeah. games on the Max app. You can watch the, uh, the, the if you have Max, uh, you can watch the games on there, as well as watching Mookie Betts' podcast, which is incredible. Oh, I know on it's on Max. Yeah. So last night I was watching it. I rewatched the Corbin Carroll and Zach Gallon oh. episodes, and it was a fun revisiting before these two teams do battle there in the playoffs. But of course, my favorite thing was. Uh, Corbin Carroll and Mookie Betts agreeing just to hold each other back should the two teams yeah, get in the yeah, ball. I forgot about that. Uh, so uh, who knows if we'll see that or not. But uh, like I said, there's a lot of national attention right now in the D-backs, and there's a lot of people that are kind of talking about them for the first time. Yeah. And I mean, it's it feels good because there's uh, nothing but praise for this Diamondbacks team. I think a lot of people recognize uh, it's stuff we've been talking about all year, which is that we're just kind of ahead of schedule, and yeah. this is a young, fun team to watch that at this point – is is kind of the the old the old playing with house money thing is is where we're at but mm -hmm. uh we were on a conference call with some of the legends in major league <laughs> baseball uh including pedro martinez uh and of course pedro martinez uh had some very kind words to say about corbin carroll and about tori lavolo uh who he's very familiar with well for me i think it's it's amazing what i've seen so far and it's not just corbin carroll uh, like you can see that Kid Carter in Texas. You can see Eli de la Cruz. You have seen, we have seen some amazing players that really play into the new rules that Major League Baseball has really applied. And Corbin Carroll, not only is he gifted uh, with his talent, but it seems like his presence on the field does not diminish regardless of what inning it is, how much he's losing for, how much he's winning by. I mean, it doesn't matter for him. Uh, his concentration level and, and his dedication to the game, I think, is the biggest tool he has. And believe me, I know Tori Lovulo, and we work together, and uh, I don't think he has enough words to, to say uh, about Corbin Carroll and, and, and the kind of professional he is. And I, I absolutely love his game. I think Arizona is a beautiful story as well because thinking about the Dodgers, San Diego, and, and the rest of the teams in the West, Arizona, I don't think anybody considered to be where Arizona is. And right now, Arizona has a lot to gain, little to lose, thanks to Corbin Carroll and the rest of the guys, uh, the more mature guys like Walker and, and Cattell Marte. Those guys are doing a great job to uh, actually sustain what Corbin Carroll wants to do because he is the, the center of attention of everything they do. And as Carroll goes, Go the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's how much I think of them. Uh, I think it's great. I think they have a lot to gain against the Dodgers. Little to lose because they weren't supposed to be there, and they are. And kudos to, to Tori Lobudo and the rest of the young kids that have never let up uh, during the regular season. Bars. Bars. The Corbin goes, the rest of the Arizona Diamondbacks go. It's such great praise. And uh Sean can attest to this because he was also in that in that meeting yeah. that that was his like the most emphatic answer that yeah. that Pedro gave about any team or any player in particular. But it is high praise for Corbin Carroll, considering that this is his rookie season. Yeah. And you know, to say something like how how Corbin goes, the so do the Diamondbacks, you know, like that's that that says a lot, yeah, uh, and I, I mean, we have seen this t team be able to win in different ways, but it definitely feels like, especially during the playoffs so far, what Corbin Carroll does and and how he sets that kind of early pace for the offense really does feel like it gets things going. Yeah, hundred percent. He he mentioned right, Cattell and and Christian Walker kind of allowing him to keep doing what he wants to do. Like it, it he, yeah, he really does set the table, and it, it, I think it does provide a, a certain amount of energy for the rest of the guys after when you see Corbin on base. And then obviously, like we talk about all the time, Corbin's presence on the base path makes p pitchers uncomfortable, and that only serves to benefit uh, whoever, whatever Diamondback is up to bat at the time. Um, the thing that stuck, about, stuck out the most about that to me was the the comment about how his presence never diminishes, because I feel like you yeah. really felt that yeah. in the wild card. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it was... Corbin Carroll still just being Corbin Carroll like it, it's weird to say uh, it, it's it's weird because it's like he almost like does not have a big presence in a way where it's like it's like he's not nothing about Corbin Carroll changes he almost like obviously you notice him but like he he just continues to go about his business regardless of the circumstance um and uh, yeah I mean like you said high praise from Arguably the greatest pitcher of all time, and it's it's Chill. it's something to be arguably, said. Arguably. <laughs> it's something to be said about the fact that uh, 
Corbin obviously is doing all of this at such a young age, yeah. uh, at such an early point in his career. Uh, and honestly, even when you look at how many professional games he's played, it's it's just incredible. So uh, hopefully he continues to do big things, and hopefully uh, he can help the Diamondbacks take this game in Los Angeles tonight because it's a big one. Another guy that is going to necessarily be uh, also how, how he goes is how the Diamondbacks go is Merrill Kelly. Merrill the mainstay. Merrill the mainstay. And Merrill Kelly obviously is one of the Arizona Diamondbacks' best pitchers. We know that. But we also know that the Los Angeles yeah. Dodgers are are Merrill Kelly's Achilles heel, if you will. He's They're his enough. greatest foe. Uh, he's never beat him. So Ever. now would be a great time. Wouldn't and it's it? not like it's a small sample size. It's not. It's not. Uh, 0 for 11, 16 career starts against the Los Angeles Dodgers with a 5.49 ERA and a 1.697 whip. Not great. All I'll say is that means that Merrill Kelly is due. That's it's what it's what's going on with the Diamondbacks lately, right? Yeah. Like whatever whatever you feel, whatever the numbers say is going to happen. If you think you know this team, you don't. You don't because uh, they're away. All signs point towards the Diamondbacks getting their ass kicked in this series, which means good things, hopefully, for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Right, uh, and it's like uh, Pedro said, they have they have a lot to lot to gain, a little to lose at yeah. this point, right? So I mean, it it really is. The fact that the pressure should be off and, and the pressure them, should be on L.A. Don't let them beat the Dodgers in game one because then the pressure is going to get real big it is. on the Dodgers. And it is. like everyone's going to start rooting for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Everyone, like everyone outside of L.A. wants the Diamondbacks to beat L.A. There's, sure. there's a good chance that that is the case. There's a good chance that the Diamondbacks are the underdog favorites that are peaking at the right time and also can get the support from fan bases that don't hate them the way that they hate some of the and other teams right Baltimore losing today i think confirmed the diamondback spot as the team of destiny because the only other team that i thought could have been the team of destiny was the, the baltimore Orioles, and they lost game one at home so you know what else could be the pointing to the fact that this is the team of destiny what's that our mustaches true Damon pointed that out in the elevator the other night. It was a pretty great revelation. Well, um, I, I mean, we haven't lost since. So it's, it's just, just something it's, to talk it's just about. a fact. It's a fact. Correlation or it's, causation? Time it, will tell. It's like the, like this fact. Like Mer like we probably won't get able, able to revisit this fact again after tonight. Yeah. But Merrill Kelly has sixty nine career strikeouts against the Dodgers. Nice, nice. Uh, but it does get worse at Chavez Ravine, right? Because he's not just bad <laughs> against the Dodgers. He doesn't just struggle, but he struggles especially in Los Angeles. He's 0-5 in eight starts with a 7.03 ERA and a 1.765 whip. Meanwhile, Jesse added this note just to put yeah. a little cherry on top of all I'm, of this bad well, news. Uh, Kershaw, meanwhile, is 14-1 and with a 1.60 ERA and a 0 0.91 whip in his career at home against your Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I I think that all of this means that the Diamondbacks are, in fact, going to uh, smash the Dodgers tonight, yeah. right? That's I mean, all signs it, point it, to it's, that. It's not a great feeling when, like, the reason that you think your team is going to win is because everything is saying they're not going to win. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> that's kind of where we're at. Like, all signs are pointing against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, but again, uh -oh. as I've been saying, uh, ever since they, they completed the series, honestly, ever since they made the playoffs, like, it's the playoffs, man. It's Anything's the, it's possible. It's the fucking yoss. It's the fucking yoss. Like, yeah. there is no reason that they should have walked all over the Brewers the way they did. The Brewers were division champions. And they came in and were clearly the better team over those two games. Who effing knows, man? It's the yoffs. Anything's possible. It's all a clean slate right now. Yeah. None of those none of those numbers matter. Uh, the only numbers matter are the ones that are scored in tonight's game, which sure. starts here in about uh, pretty soon, right? Twenty minutes. So, uh, but Merrill Kelly did discuss that he can't really look backwards at any of those starts, and I don't think any of us need to either. Uh, all he can do is look forward, and here's what he had to say. It's a bit of a, a mystery, a bit of a puzzle for me to solve, which. You know, going into the playoff game against them, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying to solve in this game. Um, it would be nice to get my first Dodgers win ever in five years in the playoffs. Uh, in my mind, I'm well overdue for one. Um, but I just think they prepare really well. Um, you know, I think they do a lot of teams that other teams, a lot of things that other teams don't. Um, whatever analytics or, um, you know, preparation department that they have over there, I think they really do a really good job of game planning. And I think they do a really good job as a lineup. Uh, one through nine stick into that game plan. Uh, if they go into a game uh, with a certain plan, I think they're ultra committed to it. Um, and even if the first at bat doesn't go the way that they think it was supposed to, um, they don't wear, they don't really um, drift from that approach. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, there are certain 
certain players and certain teams throughout your career and your life in baseball that you kind of run into that just seem to have your number. Um, unfortunately, throughout my career, uh, this team seems to be that team for me. Um, but, you know, I'm as confident as ever. Uh, I think if I start thinking about my previous games and how they've gone and, and how bad my, uh, you know, how bad my numbers are against these guys, I think I lose before I even step on the mound. Um, and I've said that before, I have ultimate confidence every time I do play the Dodgers, even though if it doesn't work out the way that I think it is going to, or the way that I would hope it does. Um, so tomorrow's no different. I'm going into that game expecting to throw, you know, nine innings, no runs. Uh, that's how I go into every game, not necessarily against the Dodgers, but, you know, some of the other teams that you've touched on. Um, you know, and we are diving into some some different stuff and some different numbers and some different video to, you know, kind of figure out the, the different pieces of that puzzle. Um, but, you know, I'm confident in my guys and I'm confident in myself going into tomorrow that we can execute a game plan and, and you know, come up with a win. First of all, that jacket, Hard. absolute fire. Uh, and, yeah, uh, I it's a mystery to us, too. I mean, Merrill is a good – he's a good – pitcher and he the the numbers are baffling against the Dodgers so of course hopefully tonight on a big stage is his night to to yeah. take care of business against it, it, this team. My thing is, is just that like this hasn't always been like a really good Diamondbacks team so like wins and losses Merrill are, Kelly's been here right yeah, yeah right wins and losses yeah. are only so much a pitcher stat obviously the you know the ERA and the whip when you combine it not like, good those are also not good yeah. and that obviously relies a lot more on him but um still like I, like like we said, it's it's a clean slate. It's a completely yeah. different situation, a whole different set of circumstances. And I mean, like in the regular season, I feel like there's in a weird way, almost like more pressure on the Diamondbacks because it's like you're trying to win the division. At this point, it's like Fuck you got nothing. You, you made the playoffs. Yeah, like we're here. you either win or you lose. It doesn't really have any. Like I mean, obviously that's big ramifications, but you know what I mean. Speaking of being weird. Speaking of being here, Mo's here. Uh, our favorite Los Angeles Dodgers fan <laughs> uh, in the chat. So good to see you, buddy. Uh, and he he says he loves these stats. So we're gonna move on uh, from this. Uh, he says, <laughs> I expect to go nine innings, no runs. What kind of weed is he smoking? Calm down out over there. That's what every pitcher says. <laughs> they should all want to go nine innings, no runs. Uh, but anyway, uh, we thank you and why you, we even mean Mo, that son of a bitch, uh, for being here right now on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. Uh, of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so. Sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when any of our shows go live. Leave us a little thumbs up. We always appreciate our attaboys uh, for you guys being here. Of course, if you're on the audio podcasting side, make sure to listen to us there. Uh, we're, I don't even think we're on the audio podcasting side. We're, we're doing the pregame. So sorry, mm -hmm. audio listeners. We're just not even giving you this option. We're but hear that apology. yeah, that's true. They don't. <laughs> They don't. That's why I can insult them like that. But uh, go get this wagon shirt, by the way, if you not, don't already have it. 20% uh, off for all diehard members. Grip that diehard membership. Of course, uh, if you do, if you are a new member, you will get this shirt for free or whatever shirt you want over at the phnxlocker.com. You will also get 20% off all future purchases. Get access to our members only Discord lounge, all of our content, including all of Jesse's writings and so much more, including discounts from our partners, uh, special merchandise just for diehards, special discounts just for you as well. Uh, and, and just our love. Become part of the PHNX family today. And our love and support. And, and speaking of family, uh, that goes out to our friend Gabriel Moreno, who mm. will, in fact, be the starting catcher tonight for the Arizona Diamondbacks per Tori Lavolo. Uh, he is back. Gabby sustained that head injury in game two of the series with the Brewers. Uh, and, of course, we didn't know uh, if, if it, like, uh, we discussed seeing him celebrating yeah. after the game. So that was definitely a good sign. Like, don't think somebody in concussion protocol or that they were worried about would be necessarily allowed uh, to yeah. party, but who knows? Maybe he just snuck in there and started having a good time without <laughs> without permission. But uh, definitely great to see Gabby back. Nice. Uh, and Lavello said that Moreno has gone through all of the necessary uh, tests and everything is fine. I think we have a clip of uh, him answering the question about how Moreno's doing. Uh, I do. Just a little one. Um, he has not entered the concussion protocol. Uh, he has been tested um, and monitored over the past couple days and continues to improve and show no symptoms whatsoever. So uh, if something changes in the next whatever, it would be 18 hours, um, we would make a change, but tomorrow we are starting catching. That's right now. 
Uh, uh, Sean was saying it's surreal to see the D Max logo there in front of the, uh, the NLDS. NLDS stuff. Uh, he's not wrong. He's not <laughs> wrong. It really is. But um, yeah, it's good news for Moreno. And of course, uh, there was uh, we have another clip here from Lavallo who kind of voiced his displeasure because when Moreno got uh, hit in the head, mm -hmm. there were Milwaukee fans that were booing right with how long it was taking for them to check him and uh yeah we we, we thought that that was a bit scumbag uh a bit of scumbag behavior but uh they did ask tori lavolo you know what what exactly or how he felt about that and if he was upset and this is what he had to say all i know the milwaukee brewers brewer fans mean unbelievable fans supportive um, energized but in my opinion they didn't have a great fan moment <clears throat> you know, one of your players is basically laying down on the field and trying to assess him. Um, there's no re-entry rule in baseball. We're trying to make sure that the athlete who wants to stay in the game is is acting properly, saying the right things. There's certain tests, questions that the, the trainer needs to ask him, and you can't rush that process. Um, and when a player is down on the field, it doesn't matter what team you're on, we're one, and it could be their player, um, and we're one. I, I think I think the fans may have lost lost a bit of that perspective. I mean, it's 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 how we feel, of course. Yeah. Like that was that sucks. I mean, it, it's it is something that we try to preach. It's something that we feel when it happens to yeah. the opposing team. Uh, I mean, it's just it it sucks, and yeah. it, it's the only thing I'll say is that like I. I don't know. Like, I don't know if they showed a replay or anything or anything. Like, I don't know if necessarily the fans realized he had gotten hit in the head with a baseball bat. Um, mm. But still, like, if a guy, I don't. It's not like there's this, like I like in football, for example, there is a track record of players faking injuries for clock management reasons and stuff like that. So sure. I understand sometimes sure. when you didn't see an injury and a guy goes out on the field and like they clearly need the clock to stop or something to be like, all right, this seems like bullshit. But that's not how baseball works. Like, you're going to have the same number of outs no matter what. So, like. It's almost like the pitch clock and the engagements yeah. thing and everything like that is not only causing confusion, but it's causing that reaction in some cases. But uh, it doesn't matter because we will come for you when it comes to Gabriel Moreno. We will not tolerate any booing well, when I he mean, gets injured or any kind of. Won't have to tolerate any because the Brewers fans aren't watching baseball that's anymore. That's true. That's very true. But Sorry about um, it. That's. Yeah. It was fair. They deserve that. Uh, after returning from the injured list, by the way, on August 13th, uh, Gabriel Moreno hit 311 with an 878 OPS in 37 games. And the Diamondback in that time frame went 22 and 15. Ooh. That was during the most important stretch yeah. of the season for this team. So yeah. there, there is not enough that can be said yeah. about Gabriel Moreno. But 100%. if you need further evidence of that, check out our short on our YouTube channel where Zach Gallant was talking about just everything that Gabriel Moreno brings, but especially the hose that he's got back there. And the fact that his arm literally allows the pitchers to feel like they don't have to worry about the engagements rule or checking that runner at first base nearly enough because they know Gabby is going to get him. Gabby's got him. He's you don't run blushing. on Gabby. He basically started blushing when he got asked about Gabby Moreno. He did. He did. <laughs> it was insane. It was love. It was absolute heart eyes, cartoon like swooning little yeah, birds it's, it's over like his when, head when donald duck has his his heart beating uh -huh. out of his chest perfect Pepe Le Pew when yep. he starts floating yeah no we don't bring up we don't bring up yeah, Pepe Pepe yeah he's, canceled he's, he's, he's canceled, and now but, you're canceled so yeah fuck. uh but he, uh gabby was ranked first in all of major league baseball of all qualified catchers with a 38 point 38 point six percent caught stealing percentage uh, and his 22 caught stealings were tied for seventh, even though he didn't play very much yeah. by comparison to a lot of catchers in the league. So yeah, he's just it's crucial to have yeah. him back there. No, the I mean, like you said, it, you can't really say enough about how important Gabby is. I think I I doubt I was alone, but in the moment when I saw him get hit in the head and ultimately get taken out of the game, I was like, oh, this might be over. Like it might be. We say it's over about everything, yeah, uh, but, so that's but, fair. But, but not just... like. <laughs> I didn't say it's so over. I thought it might be over, which is very different. Nor did he say it was Jover, which is another yeah, like, very level. I'm thinking like, over. oh, this is actually over. That's that's yeah. like bad news. Yeah. When I say it's over, that didn't mean anything. Uh, but I was just like, oh boy, they're gonna lose this game and then probably lose the next one, and the players, the playoffs are gonna be over because that's just kind of what happens when Gavin Moreno is not playing. Yep. Um, but thankfully, obviously, didn't end that way. They they kind of rallied afterwards and. Uh, now he's back. Yeah. 
it's uh, at least the Diamondbacks are 100% uh, at 100%, which is something you can't really say about the Dodgers. So hopefully that's an advantage that plays into yeah. the Diamondbacks' hand when it comes to uh, not only their starting pitching throughout this series, but uh, other other situations. But we know the Dodgers players are they all have the secret stuff and they all hit 800. Uh, OPS in the series, so yeah. we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, you got anything else? No, I was just gonna. Can you imagine what it would be like if Tommy Henry and Dre Jameson were still here? Mm. I don't know why. Well, I mean, I thought of it because you brought up their injuries. Like I feel like yeah. I know, oh, like every, like everyone deals with injuries, but like yeah. no one has talked about the fact that the Diamondbacks have also like there's two guy, at least two guys who would be on this playoff roster it's fair. or not. It's fair. Um, just saying. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just saying there's a way to make some easy money. And if you are sheepishly like uh, if you are a, a coward like me, <laughs> uh, if you are a sheepish coward like me, uh, you don't have to decide on who you think is going to actually win this game because you can still do a same game parlay over at Bet MGM like I did right here where you don't pick the winner. I did four legs. I did the over total runs at eight and a half because I think that shit's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I, I took that. batters struck out three for both Merrill yep. Kelly and Clayton Kershaw. And of course, I took Christian Walker hitting a home run uh, in this game Listen, because it's Clayton Kershaw versus Christian Walker I mean, at, in Los Angeles yeah. during the playoffs. Obviously, the home run is the big one there. It's why you get good odds on it. But consi- all things considered, it is Clayton or it is Christian Walker, also known as Cl- Kershaw's father. Kershaw's father. Um, Walker, like, Walker, and if that Walker, hits, Walker. I love everything else. Everything else should <laughs> hit. So, Papa Kershaw. Yep. And you can also get a little odds boost on this one that they have available right now on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. If you're a new customer, use our PHNX code. Make sure to opt in for that. And I think it's a $5 bet. So uh, I think I got that one up to like $70 coming back to me if I win that. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. But uh, again, good time to have some fun. And of course, fun to be had here coming up soon at 620 with first pitch. It's the fucking yaw, dude. It's the fucking yaw. So... Of course, we thank you guys so much for being here right now on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel uh, and watching us. Let's go watch the Arizona Diamondbacks win a playoff game. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Cap underscore Caveman with a K. This maniac next to me is at Sean underscore to pause. Uh, Damon is the people's producer. He's behind the Mac. We are Damon's dogs. <laughs> you can follow him. Wow, that was a deep one. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> uh, he's at Damon Dog. That's D-A-W-G. Uh, our show's at PHNX underscore d but of course, all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on twitter instagram and facebook oh man here we go here we go lds i ready, feel baby? no no like i was gotten no. to the wild card and i was like oh this is so fun where it's great to be here <laughs> and now that we've accomplished something here i'm sick let's get some oh. predictions real quick what with what do we think the like final score? The game? uh the game let's go f- score i almost made a very fatal mistake What'd you do? I almost threw the the the, the I almost did the the Suns and fourth thing. <laughs> I almost made a fatal mistake. I do think the arrows and the Diamondbacks are going to win in one less than five games tonight. Though, what do you think tonight? I think the Diamondbacks lose tonight. Oh. I have said I think they they lose tonight and then they reverse sweep, win three straight. All um, right. I want to, I want them to win if they just want to sweep straight up. But I mean, again. Not a great feeling when every the only reason you think the Diamondbacks are going to win is because everything is saying the Diamondbacks are not going to win. Um, but again, anything's possible. It's the fucking yoffs. Merrill Kelly's going to fucking shove tonight. Let's see it. Six to three Diamondbacks. There's my prediction. Derek found his fucking guts. I love it. Mm-hmm. Well, Let's I'm also, I've been having a bad day sports wise. <laughs> so I feel like I got to pick against myself. I appreciate that. Well, we appreciate you guys stopping by. We'll be back here 10 minutes after the final out. Come back. Watch us do this thing. We are a wagon. It's the fucking it's the yops. fucking yops. You can follow us all on Twitter and all that stuff. But remember, kids, baseball is fun. But it's so much more fun when you get your first win against your divisional rival in the NLDS. It's the fucking yops. <laughs> 